Hello, my name is Sebastião Santos. Welcome to this presentation, COVID-19 or the endemic vulnerability of unequal and polarized urban spaces, the case of Lisbon metropolitan area. Funny fact, this research that began before the COVID-19 pandemic aimed at studying the vulnerability of Lisbon metropolitan area under the possibility of an extreme scenario. Uh, we choose uh, instead to consider urban vulner vulnerabilities as the result of the deep asymmetries established between territories and between social groups, determined in the macroeconomic and political spheres. Uh, the processes of social spatial polarization and inequality as a main factor of vulnerability in Lisbon metropolitan area became the main focus of the research. Now, by hazard or a strange coincidence, our framework of analysis is tested by the impacts of a real extreme scenario. Economic globalization seemed to have not delivered a flat map where everything is equalized, as argued by Thomas Friedman. On the contrary, COVID-19 seems to have exposed and explored the profound inequalities and fragilities that have settled in society and territories. This can be detected at different scales between the global north and the global south, between countries, between regions, or within a urban areas such as Lisbon metropolitan area. This presentation will be organized around three main topics, the relation between globalization, neoliberal restructuring, and increased territorial polarization and social inequality, the mapping of social spatial dynamics of polarization and inequality in Lisbon metropolitan area, and the link between urban inequality polarization and increased urban vulnerability, including two extreme scenarios such as COVID-19 global pandemic. Finally, some conclusions will be drawn. Now we will go through some brief theory about the transition effects from a Keynesian economic policy to a neoliberal economic policy and how it's leading to increased social and territorial polarization. Thomas Piketty analyzed the evolution of income and private capital distribution between the beginning of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century. He concluded that inequalities increased in the beginning of the 21st century and reached the same values verified in the dawn of the First World War, corresponding to the first and second financial and commercial globalization. The source of fundamental inequality for Piketty is the long-term trend for the divergence between the return rate of capital and the annual growth rate of income and production, reflecting the advance of economic financialization since the 70s, the reformulation of the welfare state, and the productivity fall in Keynesian economic sectors. In response to Thomas Friedman's flat world globalization theory, Richard Florida argues, on the contrary, that the world is becoming more spiky, the territory is becoming more extreme. It demonstrates this trend through a topography of territorial asymmetries that take the form of mountains and valleys. This topography represents different degrees of social, economic, and innovation dynamism measured by a set of indicators. Places of global importance seem limited and concentrated in some cities and regions in contrast to territories in stagnation or decline. Other authors, such as David Harvey, refer to the uneven geographic development as a result of processes of accumulation by dispossession induced by globalization and capitalism. Accumulation by dispossession articulates examples such as the cannibalization of land by large multinationals in developing countries, the appropriation of territories for touristic functions or as real estate investments, uh, the exploitation of labor in a given industry to gain place in the global market, or even the action of rating agencies or international instances in the devaluation of the asset assets of some countries and in the valuation of others. Saskia Sassen, adds the simple and brutal dynamics of expulsion as a consequence of the new global political economy instituted at the end of the 20th century. If Keynesian economic policy was driven by objectives of greater justice and social inclusion, 
through the incorporation of the largest number of people into the logic of production consumption systems, the expansion of financial economy to non financialized places and domains, and the relocation of productive functions, on the contrary, this incorporates an increasing number of people, companies, parts of the biosphere, as well as entire parts of a country's economy that are discarded from the social economic space of global value production. For Saskia Sassen, these processes imply going beyond inequality conventional analysis and looking at the systemic edges, the places of social, economic, environmental and institutional disincorporation as indicators of global trends that cross geographical boundaries. Also, according to Raquel Honig, um, last decades of the 20th century and the first decades of the, the 21st century are marked by the emergence of a global political economy of urbanization that makes economic growth dependent on the expansion of, pro of profits in the domains of housing and land. Uh, these constitute the new sources of wealth extraction in face of the reduced productivity in the for these sectors. Uh, this leads to, uh, according to Raquel Holnik, uh, a global uh, insecurity ownership crisis that articulates the population that have seen their houses mortgaged in uh, the subprime, subprime crisis in 2008, with the people evicted from the urban gentrified centers, with the immigrants um, that um, have to leave their, the countryside because of land grabbing processes. So, um, different features of neoliberal restructuring, the globalization and financial crisis, such as the economic specialization of territories, the growth of financial sector, the relocation of productive activities, the shrinking of welfare budgets and social assistance mechanism, the predominance of market logics, uh, the transformation in government systems with the growing importance of supranational institution and loss of importance of national governance structures and at regional level, a governance oriented to competitiveness in the global economy. And also the financialization of urban space and boost of hospitality sector and the broadening of precarious labor contracts have led to the increase of territorial polarization and cohesion problems due to social, economic and institutional dy dynamics of centralization and peripheralization. This is traduced in the territory in contracts between, contrasts between the globalized landscapes of gentrification, intensive urbanization and economic activity versus the landscape of obsolescence and decline, landscapes that are, that are under processes of deindustrialization, rural aging, etc. And also to the increasing social economic inequalities determined by the global division of labor, economic restructuring, and shrinking state capacity to redistribute the benefits of economic growth in the interests of social mobility. So, the skilled population in knowledge intensive sectors contrasts with the population with precarious contracts and lower wages in sectors that are more labor intensive and less demanding in qualification, like logistics, agriculture, construction, tourism, catering, etc. And also with the people and the companies that are made redundant uh, and are discarded from global value producing networks. This is traduced in the territory with the contrast between the landscapes of deprivation and the landscapes of wealth. Now we go to the second topic, the mapping of socio-economic dynamics of polarization and inequality in Lisbon metropolitan area. Our research framework um, we, we wanted to understand how these macro uh, structural changes um, have increased multidimensional dynamics of polarization in Lisbon metropolitan area and social inequality and deprivation, and how planning instruments and public policies play an active role 
in these dynamics or in the regulation, or, or if they lack the capacity to predict and regulate change. This divergence between the transformation in the territory and the action of planning instruments and public policies led to the spreading of planning peripheries. These are the places we wanted to map and identify, places of social, economic, environmental, or institutional exposure and vulnerability, communities more vi invisible to planning instruments, policies, and government systems than others, and how this reflects in the rise of populism as the increased social and territorial inequalities are progressively transferred to the political arena. So how to map these dynamics in Lisbon metropolitan area, how to identify um, urban vulnerabilities and what territorial planning and public policies we need in the future. Uh, our methodology with five steps. Um, first, we have identified this typology uh, of socioeconomic dynamics of polarization in Lisbon metropolitan area, namely the territories in gentrification, where real estate speculation, tourist pressure, and difficulties in assessing housing emerge. Um, territories of metropolitan expansion, where the intensity of soil consumption lack of land use planning, environmental degradation, or suspended urbanization due to the 2008 financial crisis stand out. Declining industrial or agricultural territories characterized by aging, loss of population, unemployment related to the dynamics of economic restructuring, functional obsolescence in the context of globalization. And finally, deprivation territories where structural housing problems and social exclusion processes persist and have been reinforced in the last decades. For that, we had to identify dimensions and indicators for each typology of processes, social, economic, institutional, and land use indicators that were able to characterize these polarization dynamics in Lisbon metropolitan area. We collect these indicators and test disaggregation uh, levels. Uh, we evaluate the behavior of these indicators at the parish uh, level or at the subsexual level in the case of deprivation with the purpose of understanding the systemic edges of these processes, that is the territories that are more polarized, where these dynamics are felt more intensively. For that, we use a method, the, the sum of the scores resulting from the evaluation of the extreme values percentile 20 and 80 presented by each group of indicators in each typology. For example, for deprived territories beyond, beyond other indicators that were used, we were interested in knowing what parishes had the most overcrowded houses and the lower education levels. Finally, uh, we conducted interviews to local administration to confirm the results to gather qualitative information and identify main territorial vulnerabilities. These are the results of this uh, mapping of the social economic polarization in Lisbon metropolitan area. Um, the, the city is particularly prone to interurban inequalities, precisely because it's a main focal point of articulation between national economy and global flows. So dynamics uh, of competitiveness and decline, incorporation and marginalization assume particular contrasted expression and introduce uh, an asymmetric evolution uh, that involves social, economic and political transformation in the country that go beyond the period of analysis. Uh, these dynamics are mir mirrored in the into the territory in a relational way. The obsolescence of industrial or agricultural territories made economic growth excessively uh, dependent on urbanization processes or more recently from international tourism or investment. Outside this economic circuit but in deep articulation with it are the persistent problems of structural deprivation where the most disadvantaged sections of the population live in substandard conditions, the same ones that fool an economy increasingly based on precarious labors. 
this slide demonstrates the importance of scaling down the analysis of social deprivation to go beyond institutional boundaries and acquire a proxy image of social inequality in Lisbon Metropolitan Area. Now we go to the final topic, the link between urban uh, inequality, polarization, and increased urban vulnerability, including to extreme scenarios such as COVID-19 pandemic. Um, territories under process of deindustrialization, um, we identify several uh, vulnerabilities, like shrinking population, aging, loss of employment, companies and investment, lack of attractiveness, uh, reduced real estate value, industrial and abandoned areas, uh, vacant and degraded houses, uh, environmental problems, contaminated areas, constraints in maintaining public services and infrastructures due to the lack of high school income. Also, COVID-19 exposed other vulnerabilities or the backside of the industrialization. Uh, COVID disruption uh, disrupted several value chains, it created shortages of supply, difficulties in the distribution circuit, temporary closure of factories or trade, and exposed European dependency on global market production chains. The relocation of strategic productive sectors to other parts of Europe left Europe in particular of the world, left Europe in a particular fragile position respecting essential goods required to face an extreme scenario of a global pandemic crisis. We have the examples of masks and ventilators that were in fault in the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, so a sign that um, European Union is worried with the situation is that the next generation EU uh, wants to finance the green reindustrialization of Europe to boost its strategic autonomy. These are uh, in places uh, identified under the deindustrialization processes in Lisbon metropolitan area. Uh, also, um, in the rural areas, uh, problems are related to popula population loss and aging, low attractiveness for new investments, low economic and social diversity, low qualifications and low mobility, digital exclusion due to network infrastructure or age issues, lack of public services, and dependency of mobile immigrant laborers in agriculture. Uh, also COVID-19 um, exposed uh, vulnerabilities uh, linked to uh, the abandonment of uh, agricultural territories. Fears of global food chain collapse or loss of manpower lead to the protection of domestic distribution channels from mandatory lockdown measures, highlighting the importance to revitalize rural areas and short distribution channels. Uh, also, several COVID outbreaks in the immigrant community that constitute a large part of the labor force in the agriculture sector in Portugal due to migration and aging exposed the inhuman and invisible housing and working conditions these migrants experience. Many of them live in overcrowded containers, earn low wages, and are subjected to employment contracts that are not in compliance with labor law. These are some territories and the process of rural isolation and aging. Uh, in gentrified uh, territories that were characterized by um, problems related to expulsion of residents and small business, uh, increased CTSS constraints to, due to inflection of real estate prices, uh, downgrading of purchasing power due to rising prices in several goods and services, overcrowded apartments, mainly by students, uh, by living students, young adults and migrants, uh, pollution, mobility and noise problems, uh, expansion of uh, slums uh, in formal areas, uh, feed by evictions in the historic center, uh, and loss of economic diversity um, and excessive dependence on seasonal tourism, structure around precarious labor contracts, uh, and also uh, the governance oriented to the grand projects, the global events and territorial marketing campaigns. Uh, and here, uh, COVID-19 have uh, particularly, um, particularly severe impact 
the collapse of touristic activity in Portugal due to the pandemic restriction explains three quarters of the historic 7.6 drop in GDP in 2020. Uh, during the year of the 2020, the hotel and restaurant sectors registered an increase in insolvencies of 30.8%, being one of the most affected by the pandemic crisis. Uh, real estate, administrative and support services, accommodation and food services represent 62 of absolute registered unemployment in April. Uh, this um, unemployment uh, was mainly uh, in um, mainly uh, affected temporary in fragile and precarious contracts. Um, and uh, one of the impacts is that more than half of the tenants in the capital stopped paying rent uh, in the months of April 2020. Uh, COVID-19 demonstrated the unsustainable uh, model of over-tourism uh, and excessive dependency on the hospitality sector in Lisbon. The decline of international tourism combined with the city emptied of residents determined the rapid collapse of business and rising unemployment. Also, COVID outbreaks uh, affected students uh, and migrant community uh, living in those overcrowded apartments. These are some images of the gentrified territories, mainly in the center of Lisbon, and uh, also about marketing campaigns um, that were conducted uh, to, to promote global events uh, such as Web Summit and also manifestations of the population uh, against uh, gentrification and um, also the, a lot of the regeneration uh, projects that uh, have contributed to increase and in the, the real estate prices of the houses uh, around. Um, the process of uh, intensive uh, uh, urbanization uh, that were characterized by the presence of suspended real estate projects, uh, illegal urbanization, the lack of infrastructures, and conflicts between different land uses, how to articulate industrial, agriculture, uh, agricultural and residential uses, uh, challenges in providing public services under the context of splintering urbanization, but also environmental issues, pollution, soil and energy consumption, environmental degradation due to increased urbanization. Uh, and it's interesting because uh, COVID-19 uh, exposed the link between zoonotic risks and increasing urbanization and globalization, especially in the developing world. Uh, shrinking habitats due to urban growth means the shortening of distance between communities of humans and communities of animals, uh, facilitating the spread of virus between different species. Um, beyond challenges that we have to face, like climate change, biodiversity reduction, environmental pollution, we have to consider now the broad effects of an unsustainable urbanization, uh, as can be the case of COVID-19. These are some images of uh, territories and the processes of metropolitan expansion in Lisbon metropolitan area. Uh, images of uh, suspended urbanizations, uh, areas that were developed illegal, mainly in the, mainly in the 60s, 70s, um, the new golf course and private gate communities. Uh, and finally, we have deprived the territories uh, that were uh, characterized by the presence of unqualified professional classes, uh, age school drop rates and illiteracy rates, uh, age unemployment rate, age dependence on social allowances, overcrowded accommodation, degrading of social housing blocks, uh, and also now the spread of slums with lack of basic infrastructure, water, sanitation, or energy. Um, this lack of this uh, spread of the existing slums is due to the gentrification processes. So it's interesting how these polarization processes are uh, connected and they are linked with each other. And these areas are also the enclave of social uh, minorities. Uh, and uh, COVID-19 uh, um, is uh, is uh, has had a particular uh, effect on uh, uh, these places and in these communities. 
uh, the argument uh, of uh, Ulrich Beck um, that the global wealth accumulated at the top and the risk at the bottom proved to be right. Uh, the risk of infection was particularly high for the communities living in these areas for two essential reasons. Because they live in substandard housing conditions and because of their socioeconomic status. Less qualified manual workers that live in these areas deliver essential services or maintain strategic economic sectors. So they could not quarantine or work for home. Um, so uh, COVID outbreaks in Lisbon metropolitan area, uh, especially in the summer of uh, 2020, match a large part of the identified deprivation zones. These are images of deprived territories, uh, different typologies of deprived territories, just slums, camping parks, social housing blocks, consolidated neighborhoods, or even uh, neighbor, or even places that get um, confined in the new infrastructures or behind the factory or behind uh, ur uh, urbanizations. Brief conclusions. Um, global competitiveness uh, and neoliberal economic policies increased territorial polarization and social spatial asymmetries. This imply new methodologies in urban research that privilege the identification of metropolitan contrasts. The mapping of extreme social economic polarization patterns in Lisbon metropolitan area allowed the identification of places where social, economic, and environmental processes of expulsion, vulnerability, invisibility occur, planning and public policy peripheries. Um, and COVID-19 has exposed and explored these social spatial asymmetries and vulnerabilities. Territories excessively reliant on hospitality sectors are now under economic and social collapse. Um, the susceptibility of global supply chains to an external shock highlighted the backside of the industrialization and rural abandonment processes. The outbreak of the virus made the growing social cleavage, cleavages particularly visible by affecting mainly low-skilled communities and immigrants, subject to precarious working conditions and substandard housing contexts. And at the environmental level, the retroactive risks of shrinking ecosystems due to increased urbanization were evidenced. Any post-COVID strategy, such as next generation EU, must imply the mapping of uneven geographic development processes and social spatial inequalities, followed by a new macroeconomic policies that mobilize investment, planning instruments, government systems in order to reverse these trends increased social inclusion, territorial cohesion, cooperation, and environmental balance. This is the only path for a less uncertain, more just, and sustainable future. Thank you all.